The, the, the dream, excuse me, the dreaming argument seems to be a pretty powerful argument and a pretty powerful reason for doubting the things that we normally believe, especially about the external world, as Descartes points out. Uh, but in the objections and replies, several philosophers express serious reservations. The first of which that just we just want to go over, we have thought about the objection that uh, comes. It's the third set of objections, which is a set of objections that was raised by Thomas Hobbes, the famous or what he sometimes referred to in in the uh, objections and replies to as the famous Brit the famous English philosopher, and. Here's a, a quote from the objection of replies, but if we follow the senses without exercising our reason in any way, we will be justified in doubting whether anything exists. Okay, is he sounds like he's agreeing with Descartes. And then he goes on and makes a wisecrack, basically, about this is an old long-standing argument, you know, Descartes... Uh, w you got me to read Descartes stuff, he tells Mersenne, the the guy who's uh, the intermediary. You got me to read this stuff, telling me how this guy is such a novel thinker, but all he's doing is giving us old arguments, which basically, the second point is sort of a cheap shot, but the first one is a point. It says it's not the senses, it's not following the senses, but following them without exercising any reason is what leads you to have reason for doubts. So the objection is, well, gee, if you think about it, you should be able to find and discover that you really are not dreaming or when, you, when you're not. Now, and then to this, Descartes has two things that he responds, or at least I want to point out two things. First of all, he says, you know, he has to bring up these reasons. He didn't think, uh, he, he has to bring up these reasons. And he makes an analogy to somebody who's writing about medicine. That is, if the guy was writing about medicine and just, and he's trying to discuss the cure of the disease, he has to explain the, what the disease is. He has to describe the disease. He has to describe where it's from. So Descartes' point is, when I'm raising these arguments, it's not that we can't get around it with by exercising reason. In fact, ultimately, it's going to be by exercising his reason that he's ultimately going to justify his belief in the external world and put science back on the foundation that it needs to be. But here, the point is, if he doesn't explain the reasons for doubting this, he's not going to be able to explain how it is that you actually know these things or basically give the answer that Thomas Hobbes has already given. And in responding to the second point, he says, look, it wasn't supposed to be new. He's just preparing the reader for using reasoning in evaluating reality. That is, the arguments are just intended for his methodological purpose. It wasn't that it was a great novel idea, but I think what Descartes thinks is it is a novel usage. And I think in this regard, it looks like Descartes has some good points in response to Hobbes' objection. So I think He's explained exactly what's going on. And I should point out, one of the reasons that we consider the objections and replies is that the objections and replies, first of all, the objections at least raise questions. Even if they don't show that what Descartes is saying wrong, they raise questions to, to provide a medium for Descartes to explain, to clarify what he's talking about. And I think here, in this case, the objection certainly does that, and we have the clarification from Descartes, and it helps us better understand what Descartes is trying to say.